Hello, everybody. Um, we have an aqua. She is in a cone of shame because she has been picking at her fetters. So while I pick out an article from Yield Atlanta Journal Constitution, have an aqua in a cone of shame. Because you're very cute, aren't you, Aquila? No? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, let's do the article that's about like how there were explosions in Midtown. I totally missed this. When were there explosions in Midtown? Yesterday morning. That's why traffic was so terrible. Stream. I know, Aki, I know. No. You want the snuggles? You want the snuggles? How yeah, well, you want the snuggles? You want the snuggles? Isn't this important? This is much more important than me writing ink reviews, quite frankly. She needs the snuggles. What? Clearly I'm not petting her right. Yeah, Aqua got put in the cone of shame. Two days ago? Yeah, two days ago. Um because she likes to pick at her feathers like you can see on her butt but there's like oh I know I stopped giving you scritches and like on her like breast area she just like goes to town and picks out feathers especially ones that are like freshly growing in because apparently those are the itchiest and we've at the vet ruled out any medical causes because we did that first and determined it's basically it probably started out as hormonal but um yeah, so, but then she decided, oh, that's fun. I like doing this. And she's a destructo bird. Like, she's always been a destructo bird. So she just, like, does it. It's her, basically, bird equivalent of, like, chewing her, biting her nails or something. So, um, occasionally, like, usually it's not bad. Like, maybe a little bit. But sometimes it gets real bad. And, like, in this case, she's... There are sections of her that are bald, like really bad. And so she gets the cone of shame to get her feathers a chance to grow back in. And she does not like it because no one likes the cone of shame. But it, she's been living with the cone of shame off and on for like three years now. So she knows. She recognizes it, flies away from it. But she also knows how to navigate within the cone of shame now. Versus when the first time she was like, how, even, what? So she, she accepts her fate. And her feathers will grow back in. Give, be given a chance to grow back in. And usually once they're like big and like full feathers, then she's like ignores them. It's like while they're growing in that she, it's like primo picking time. Okay, Aqua, do you want to, do you want to chill, hang out on the computer or my shoulder while I do this? Or do you insist on snuggles? I mean, of course you're gonna insist on snuggles. Hmm. 
What? I know I stopped. That's a travesty that I stopped. She's like shoving her beak into my fingers, so I'll continue giving her pets. When I want my fingers? I have my fingers on my shoulder. No, do you want to go on the computer and watch me? Do you want to go on the monitor? You flew there all by yourself earlier while I was like out of the room for two seconds. I know. I know. Okay, let's go on my shoulder. Okay, so we got inks today. So I'm done with that massive haul of inks that I got um, for Christmas. But now we're going on to new inks. There's still one more new ink I haven't yet done, which is Sailor Apricot. I got this as a free bottle of ink with a pen I bought at Fountain Pen Hospital. And other than that, then we're gonna go back to doing my backlog of ink samples. The one we're the other one we're doing today is this one, Girbon Rosiclement. Um, I hope I have enough left in here to actually do full reviews because I've used it a little bit and I really like it. And I tried to hold myself back so I don't have enough to do reviews. But we'll see. They might be some janky reviews. Yes, Akiwa. Kisses, I know. But yeah, so that, but first we're gonna do apricot. What? What? Mm -hmm. I should probably get the swab up. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um, apricot is bright and obnoxious, and it's lovely. Aqua, what are you doing? So you remember um, the Jacarbon en Soleil? Um, apricot's probably the closest one I got to it. Um, other ones, inks look similar in swab, but the writing sample is a little more dull. Apricot is about the only one that really matches the vibrancy level. Aqua, what are, where are you going? Where are you going? Are you trying to... Are you trying to help? What are you doing? Oh no! Aqua, you knocked the thing down. Aqua, what are you doing? She's being cute and obnoxious, which is her specialty. Boop. Boop. Let's go back to sleep in the blanket. Um, part of her being freshly cone of shamed is that um, she was real pissed about it on Tuesday, <laughs> which I mean, understandably, but that also meant that she was spending her time being pissed and wouldn't take her normal nap that she normally takes. So she was real tired, which made her grumpy and even more pissed. And then she forgot, like, and she just like wouldn't take a nap, like I said. And then she finally did sleep eventually, but then she only wanted to sleep in my blanket because she could um, support her neck better. But I needed to sleep in my blanket, so that doesn't work. I need to redo the thing. I actually like the little plastic doohickey in the sailor bottles, by the way. I think they make it easier to fill because of the short squat nature. of the Sailor ink bottles. But yeah, and so then she was exhausted. And yeah, she's been basically the last couple days alternating, like being a lot more like resistant to napping and being pissed. But then like, she's also been exhausted, so she's wanted to nap more. It's been a weird sort of combination. Why is this not filling well? I hope it's not like still residually clogged from the the terror that was the uh, diatromentous ink last week. That was a terrible time. Uh, 
Okie dokie. Checking shit. Er, come on. Cool. Just making sure everything looks good. Okay, so now let's go. We need our notebook and then pencil. And I'm gonna actually angle my mic down a little bit because last time um, Alex did enjoy the scritch, scritch, scritch. Oh yes, you could see the uh, the terribleness from last time. And so I thought that might be a good idea to continue to give you guys the scritch, scritch, scritch. Aqua. Aqua's being very needy. What? What? Do you need to go in your cage? Are you hungies? I think she might be hungies. It is about the time she normally eats food. I'll be right back. Less do you think that the cone of shame hinders her ability to move. When she, um just now came over to me she basically flew clean across the room so yeah she is not mobily inhibited at all she just looks very sad because she's in a cone of shame okay angling mike down for the scritch scritch Hoping the lighting situation be a little better than normal because it's starting to be lighter later. But it doesn't look all that much better on my screen. So I don't know. And yes, Echo was hungry. She actually needed to poop as well. She saved her pooping until she was in her cage. And I was like, okay, so let's see how this goes. Yeah, so right away I can tell that similar to the Jacques Arbon uh, Orange Soleil, um, all the other oranges I've done, and I've actually done quite a few oranges, um, aren't as bright when you actually write with them as they are in the swab. They're a little more red, a little more subdued. This is definitely in your face, which I enjoy.
Mm, yes. So I had inked this up initially when I got it in the pen I bought, um, a Sailor 1911. And I was like disappointed. And I don't know what it was about it, but like it, it I don't know if it's the lightness of the ink combined with the fine nib or the fact that it, like it was a, it's a dry writer, but it feels like eh, I wouldn't necessarily want to use this ink in a like dry fine pen like this. Like my instinct is pressed down harder to get more ink on the paper. And I think that's more a function of the lightness, but I'm not sure till I'll, till I write with the other pens. So it feels like I want to press down more in this pen as well. So it's almost so, which I didn't get when I did the Jacquemart Orange Soleil. So it's almost like it's a shade lighter than that, than that other ink or something. Like it, it just feels like, like for some reason, not enough ink is getting to the page for my taste. I don't know if it's, like I said, because of this shade or because it, like, it doesn't feel dry. It's it's a strange sensation, and I'll think about it more as I go through writing this. What exactly? How to phrase it?
Yet still don't know how I feel about it. Like, I love how it looks in this swab. It's just fucking gorgeous. And I love the writing sample here. But it's just for some reason, like, actually writing with it is very strange. I don't know. The shading's lovely, though. Like, this is fantastic. Do like. Okay, next. Maybe I'll like it better on the Kukuyo. Maybe it's the fact that it's the, the cream shaded paper. Which does fuck with oranges quite a bit. Like, I know that. Yeah, I'm already liking it a lot better on the Kikuyo, which is the off-white. Yeah, this is one of those oranges that is just not coming across the vibrancy across, is not coming across on the webcam, which this has happened with the past oranges as well. But yeah, it's really in your face bright.
Yep. Definitely liking this better on this paper. It's just, it, it's coming across better. And maybe this ink just likes, likes a Kuyo better? Because I've experienced that. Sometimes inks will just prefer, like some inks don't like Tomoe River for whatever reason. Maybe that's why I was meh on it when I was using it, when I first inked it, because I only brought Tomoe River with me. It seems to not like Tomoe River, at least for my taste. Yes, this explains so much about traffic yesterday. Because I was very confused why the traffic was doing the way. Because it wasn't just like normal heavy traffic, it was like weird heavy traffic. So it was all these people on detours. Yep, like that a whole lot more on the Kikuyo. Like really digging that. It's just on the Tomoe River, I'm meh. Yeah, pencils. I'm just dropping everything today. Okay, and then, yeah, I'm digging this on the Rhodia, too. Actually, not digging it on the Rhodia as much as I was on the Kikuyu, but yeah, this is this is one of those inks that benefits 
Um, some inks benefit from cream paper. Some are neutral with cream paper. Some do not like cream paper whatsoever. This does not like cream paper. This orange. This orange needs a, a white paper. Okay, now shitty paper time. Let's see how it does. This is always a fun experiment. Because it's just really like, it's some inks I can tell right away that they're going to be terrible, but some it's just like, ah. And some inks I can tell might not be great, but are like so bad, it's shocking. Like that one from a couple weeks ago, um, the Diatramentus Underwater. Great, great ink. Blew through the paper, shitty paper. Like it wasn't even there. And I could not have predicted that from its performance on the other papers. I'm actually liking how this is looking on the shitty paper. Like it, it looks better on the shitty paper because the shitty paper is white than the Tomai River, which is cream. Yeah, it looks great in the regular pen, too. Like, I'm not seeing really much in the way of feathering at all, either, in the dry or regular writer, which is pleasant. If you want to write a fun with a fun ink and a shitty on a shitty notebook, this might be your ink. We'll see how the bleed through looks like, though.
Okay, so like it it looks actually like you got some feathering on the really wet pen, but like it's not bad compared to all the other inks I've seen. So I'm actually real curious what this looks like on the other side. That's passable. Mostly because like this paper is really thin and it's an orange ink. So you're not going to have a lot of ghosting because it's just not dark. But yeah, I would say if you have to use shitty paper for whatever your circumstances, but you want to use a fun ink, Sailor Apricot's your ink. Okay. Yeah, that. Hmm. I'm just humming at like unexpected performance on the shitty paper. Like, I'll take it. Hell, I got a whole bottle of stuff. That's good to know. And ah, oh, that Sailor ink smell. Sailor is one of those few inks that I actually have more bottles of than samples. Because normally I'm an intense sampler rather than bottle purchaser. I've got like, what, three bottles of Sailor and like two samples or something. Just went straight for the bottles there. That and like Private Reserve. But that's because that's before I knew that samples existed. Also, that was before samples tended to exist because that was... Before the Goulets came in, I think Goulets were the ones who came up with the sampling idea. I have no idea. Yell at me if that attribution is incorrect. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go clean pens, and then I will be back after I clean. Okay, be right back.
Hola, we're back. Okie dokie. And I'm gonna move the color card the other way so I don't get water on it. Smear up my very nice swabs, which has happened to a couple of my other pens or swabs. Okay, so this next one, like I said a little bit earlier, we're doing Girbon Rose Cyclamen. Rose Cyclamen. For some reason, I'm struggling with proper pronunciation. Of that. But, oh, uh, where is the box? No, it's not that box. It's not the box. Oh, wait, no, I already took it out. But um, you can see there's not a lot in this sample. I think it's a, it should be enough to do a review. But it's going to be a little bit interesting doing the fill. Um, let me show you what it looks like, which is why, and show you why, like, I couldn't help myself. Because it's a real good pink, y'all. There it is. Look at that. Look at that great, great ink. And it flows really nicely too. Like it's a good ink. Okay, I got some in the pilot. Gonna pull it a little bit back because that's definitely more than I need. It's the good thing about these reviews is that they're only a couple lines essentially, and so it makes it a little easier. Okay, that should be good for the waterman in terms of like not a lot of ink in there. I guess that's my own damn fault with a like it's like it's a little bit hard with the Goulet samples because they're only two mils. But if I haven't like if it's just two milliliters, I can do that. No problem in terms of filling it. If I've touched it a little bit first, like in this case, that things become difficult. It looks like I've gotten some in there. Okay, cool, yeah, I got I got enough in all three. Excellent. But yeah, I'm glad I put back some of that ink from the pilot because, yeah, wouldn't have been possible. You can see I've got dregs. Like, this would have been more than enough to, like, get a full fill on that pilot and, like, go to town in terms of, like, if I was just testing this in one pen. Like, like if I had that amount and, like, I was just, like, using my Lamy, which my Lamy is like one of my baseline pens for testing it's because that's the pen I've had the longest. So I just know how it writes. But yeah. Okie dokie. I'm gonna do a little quick pencil sharpen off screen real quick. Okay. Ooh, I should have sticky noted that. There's lots of fun bite marks on this pencil.
Falsiklamon. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just distracted. Like, the bite marks normally don't bother me, but this time they left, like, enough, like stuff sticking out so I can feel it, like, while I write with the pencil. It's a very strange sensation. It's a very strange sensation, I should say. Um, the article that I was doing earlier was... Um, not actually that long, so I'm going to switch to a different article. I thought it was longer than it was, but it was just basically like, hey, there was an explosion. Here are the details about the explosion. So we're now switching to something about the county pension funds. test to see if I actually got the fill that I thought I did because if it writes weird starting off oh no there we are Yeah, but if anyone says that like Girbon inks dry are dry writers or something, that not this one. This one is gorgeous flow. And gorgeous color. Like, what I do also like is that it's very similar in color to actually a bunch of really good ones. Um, like, I think it's very similar also to, oh yeah, like Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel, Diamond Magenta Flash, Chesterfield Rose. This one's discontinued, or like, this ink brand is defunct. This one has sparkle in it. This one's only available in giant bottles. When I say giant, I mean like three ounce bottles. If you like this pink, but know that you're not going to use a whole three ounce bottle of it. Gier Bomb bottles are available in 10 and 30 milliliters. So you can get a smaller amount of bright ass pink as appropriate for your needs. People shit on all the tiny bottles. But honestly, there are a bunch of inks that I want more than a sample of but I don't want a big ass bottle of. Like 20, I am a fan of 20 milliliter bottles. I've got a couple of those like pilot 15 milliliter bottles. That's the perfect amount. For some eggs. Like I said, more than a sample, but not like way more than I will ever use. Like the whole sailor switching to tiny bottles thing. The tiny bottles part I actually don't mind because like I said, there's inks like apricot. Honestly, I probably would have been happy buying a 20 milliliter bottle of apricot. Same with Rikucha, though that has actually allowed me to give out a whole lot of samples of Rikucha. But like Rikucha is not one that I actually blow through. Epinard, I would be mad if I only had a 20 milliliter bottle. 
it's the it's the same it's the same price as the big bottles. It's it's the like doubling of price that bothers me about that, but not the like actual si bottle size reduction itself. Like, mm, unlike the um, Sailor Apricot, where the vibrancy wasn't really coming across well in the webcam, vibrancy is coming across damn well um, for this one. Like, yeah, it's it's that searing, and I love it. <laughs> like I said, don't want three ounces of it, which is why I haven't gone for the um, Noodler's Cactus Fruit Eel. There's also a slight difference in shade between them, where I'm like, eh, on the Cactus Fruit Eel, but I'm loving this one. I'm actually regretting um, purchasing the sailor stuff that I did at Fountain Pen Hospital instead of just getting a bottle of this. Because one, it would have been cheaper. Two, then I would have a bottle of it. Because this is definitely filling my, my I need a bottle of it after using the sample rule. Which, for those of you who don't know, my rule is one, sample first. Two, If I am sad when the sample is gone, then I need the bottle. If I'm not sad, like even if I liked the ink, but I'm not sad that it's gone, then I don't need a bottle. But this one, I definitely will be sad when it is gone. Even though I have several pink inks that I like just don't use as often. But that's more a function of I don't use my pens as often. Now I use mainly pencil in my day job because I need that erasability. Which has been great for my pencil burning through my pencil stash because it was getting bad. Because I was, before I started this job, I was using my pens all the time, but I was not touching my pencils and the stash was building up. So now it's flipped. I need to switch pages, B9.
Come on, AJC. Uh, yes, good ink. Need a bottle of it. Can't believe I haven't bought a bottle yet. Okay. Yeah, this one still looks real dull on the camera, yet this one is looks about as vibrant. It's a little dark because of the lighting in general. Um, but like, yeah, vibrancy isn't lost on the camera with this one.
Yeah, this is just a joy to use. It's making me realize that this one was probably a little dry. Either a little dry or a little light. I still haven't decided. But like, I'm not like just motoring through this the writing like I am with this. This is just like, yes, good, beautiful, wet, flowing ink. Just like thing of thing of beauty. I started reading several lines down. Beautiful, beautiful ink. I really fucking need a bottle of this. Real bad. Real bad. So badly. I'm just looking at the, the Sailor Apricot now that it's fully dry on the Rodia. As usual, this is giving you the best representation via this webcam. This webcam prefers the Rodia. And right now the shot you're seeing is probably the best I'm gonna get translating the vibrancy via this webcam. Um, yeah, it's really bright. There's there's more yellow that you see on camera than there is on the page. But yeah, is, this is a yellowy orange, which I prefer over a reddish orange, even though I have reddish oranges. Reddish oranges tend to be more legible when writing with them, just because they're usually darker by nature.
Yes, I know I, I've said this a million times, but I really need a, a bottle of this. It's just really pretty. It flows amazingly. And it doesn't feel too wet. It just feels like a nice lubricated, like good writing ink. And it's a great color. It does, it has a little itty bit of shading, but it's mainly just in your face and it's amazing. Now let's see how it performs on crappy paper because that, that, I'm interested because inks that flow this nicely tend to just burn through the crappy paper like there's no tomorrow. That's what happened with the uh, Teatro Ventress underwater black blue. Gorgeous on everything else, just destroyed the shitty paper. It's not as in your face on the shitty paper. I think just because you don't have like the, the like subtle variances in the letters that you get on good paper that doesn't just absorb like this paper does. It's kind of better in this one. Like I've I've put um, bright ass pinks in this one before. For some reason, they just always work with the, this exact like nibs with. Like forgot to write that this is the wet pen.
Okay. Feathering isn't as bad as I expected, but it's still worse than the apricot. Let's see what it looks like when I flip it over. Yeah, not terribly great. Especially in this wet one. That's just horrific. The other two, I guess, are passable, but it's borderline. Okay, and that actually should do it for me then. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm gonna empty out these. See, I told you I would have more than enough ink to actually complete the reviews. It was just if I could, get, could like actually fill everything, that was the issue. I knew. <clears throat> So I was like, it doesn't actually take that much volume of ink to get the words down on the page. It's like two pages worth of writing total. Which, like a milliliter and a half is more than enough for just two pages. But it's whether I can distribute that ac across pens. Yeah, probably like I usually need like maybe like a mil to half a mil actually when you count everything that gets in the feeds and everything. But yeah, I'm gonna put this back in the box. It was already labeled A3. But yeah, so I'm gonna go clean these. Um, thanks for joining me. Um, so when it comes to next week, I have no idea if it's going to be... So the ink reviews will be on a Monday, definitely next week. We're going to return to Mondays. I have no idea what time. I have been trying to nail down <clears throat> like my work schedule, but it's still up in the air. I've been chasing around this one student's parent for like two weeks now, trying to get something set up might finally happen, um, but who knows? So it might be normal time. It might be earlier. We might be doing earlier in the day, um, but I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'll tweet, I'll post in all the like Slack and places, post on Instagram, have an announcement on the page, um, on the info, like down there or like over at the tab up there somewhere, depending on if you're on mobile or not. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you posted, but thanks for joining me in the meantime. Okay. Bye guys. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, yeah. This is what we did. I need a bottle of this, but anyway. So thanks for joining me and have a good, I guess, weekend since tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. Anyway, thanks guys. Bye.